Mr Corbyn to quit his party, including from the Home Secretary Sajid Javid. Some argue it's another blow for a party shrouded in negativity, which seems to be uh, the centre, centering rather on the leader himself. Joining us to discuss this from Westminster is Michael Walker from Mubara Media and writer Benedict Spence. Hello to you both. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Benedict, to you, first of all, what do we make of these, um, these latest uh, comments from the Labour leader? Well, I don't really think it changes anything. I mean, we already knew that he took part in this wreath-laying ceremony. He had admitted as much in his article in The Morning Star in 2014. To then come out this afternoon and say, as he has, that he doesn't think he took part in the ceremony, I mean, it's just preposterous. The photograph of him taking part in the ceremony was already in the public domain. To then come out and be so dishonest like this, I mean, it's just... It, it just beggars belief, really. Michael, it, 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 I mean, we, we can see him with his hand on, on the wreath and he says he wasn't sure if he took part in the wreath laying itself. Bit of orcs. Uh, well, I think we need to take a step back and look at what was the context of this ceremony. So Corbyn was invited to Tunisia in 2014 by the president of Tunisia to go to a conference which was bringing together different voices from Palestine to try and create unity among the Palestinian parties and the Palestinian factions so they could better negotiate peace with Israel. The main part of the ceremony was commemorating 45 people or 45 plus people who were killed in 1985 by an Israeli airstrike on the offices of the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization. They were the official representatives, the internationally, internationally, re, interna, sorry, internationally recognized government in exile of Palestine at that period in time. It seems that what happened was as part of that ceremony, there were also wreaths laid for other members of uh, that Palestinian movement. In this case, this guy was a terrorist. Um, Corbyn seems to have been unsure whether or not he was there laying a wreath on that guy's grave. I mean, what's key is why was he there? He was there to commemorate the death of 45 people who were the recognised government in exile who were bombed in 1985 by Israel. I think that's something we should actually celebrate. Uh, Benedict, is that a reasonable uh, um, wrap-up for you then? Well, well, no, not really, because, I mean, in the article itself, he states that he knows that he is also commemorating the deaths of three people killed by the Mossad in Paris in the early 90s. And to then talk about him being at an event to promote unity amongst the Palestinian peoples, I mean, bear in mind that Hamas and other militant organisations have gone to war with Fatah in the past and done appalling things to members of their own side. I don't really think that you can then say that this event was in any way promoting peace, given that he was commemorating people involved in the worst kind of violence. If he actually wants to talk about some sort of unity, why was he at this event, but as far as I'm aware has never been to an event honouring the people who were killed at Munich by these terrorists? It just doesn't really stand up to scrutiny for me. Michael, I mean, we've, we've heard from the widow of um, Josef Romano, who was a champion weightlifter. He was castrated and then shot dead by the Munich terrorists. Um, she, Ilana Romano says that Mr Corbyn is a danger. Uh, I think obviously that's incredibly tragic and I send my condolences to that widow. Uh, I think, as I've said before, we need to look at why Corbyn was at this ceremony. The ceremony was not to uh, commemorate specifically some people who committed a terrorist attack in Munich. This event was to commemorate primarily the 45 people who were killed, 45 civilians, part of a government in exile, um, and to take part in a conference which was trying to bring together different factions in Palestine. I think the comment made previously was completely incoherent, the idea that why would you have a peace conference between two groups which have been fighting each other? I mean, that's precisely why you have the a peace conference. The point is that he, so the fact that Hamas he continues to completely gloss over the fact that why Hamas and Fatah OK, guys, if you both there. speak at once, then no-one can hear what you're saying. Just finish your point, please, Michael, and then we'll bring in Benedict. OK, yeah, so my point there was that the idea that because Hamas and Fatah had been at war, it was uh, illegitimate to turn up to a peace conference that was trying to bring them both together. I mean, that's why you have a peace conference. That's why Jeremy Corbyn was there. And that's why he was talking to two different groups that have a very complicated, okay. difficult past. OK, Benedict. As everyone who's been involved in any okay. peace negotiations before would know, okay. you Benedict. have to deal okay. with okay. people okay. who have awkward made your histories. Point. You've made your point, Benedict, go. That is certainly true, but what he completely fails to address, as he often does, is the fact that this isn't an equal partnership. Hamas has been involved in the murder of Fatah, of Fatah members, which you couldn't really say has been reciprocated in the same way. But back onto the original point, which is why he was there, looking at the broader context of why he was at this ceremony. 
he knew that these people were being commemorated. He is being photographed laying a wreath on the graves of these people. And I refuse to believe that he wasn't aware who they were. He was stood in front of their gravestones. He must have known who they were. He yeah. must have. You okay. can't just say that because he was part there as part of a broader thing, there's nothing wrong with pulling out of that or refusing to be photographed in front of that grave specifically. Okay. Presumably there were pre plenty of other memorials to other people murdered in other cases. Okay. Why specifically this one? Michael, I mean, if he didn't know, he should have known, surely. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn was attending uh, a ceremony organised by the PLO, organised by the Tunisian president. This was not a fringe event. This was a legitimate event which was trying to bring together different parties in Palestine and commemorate uh, people that had died in the Palestinian liberation struggle. Some of those who had died were civilians um, and some of those who died were terrorists. And, yeah, he should not have been laying a reef at that grave, but I really don't think that's the primary reason he was there. And I think the reasons he were there not only are legitimate but should be celebrated. There's a reason these stories aren't being written about any other politician, which is that Jeremy Corbyn is incredibly rare in that he genuinely cares about international politics and he genuinely cares about people who are oppressed. Um, there's a reason why Jeremy Corbyn is there and Ed Miliband wasn't. It's because only Jeremy Corbyn is really genuinely interested in peace in the Middle East and the liberation of the Palestinians. Okay, Might I say something? Benetix, I mean, something? if you're involved in international politics, you know, sometimes you'll find yourself in a room, or in this uh, case, a, a graveside, with people um, that have done dreadful things. Absolutely. But why lie? Why lie about it? He started off by saying that he didn't know who they were. He obviously knew who they were in the first article that he wrote in the Morning Star in 2014. He's lied about it, and then even after the photograph has come out that you can see on your screens, even after this has been published, he has come out and says he doesn't think he took part in the wreath-laying ceremony. Now, actually, what does this say for a man who wants to be Prime Minister of this country? That he is there at an event honouring the deaths of three terrorists involved in the murder of Israeli athletes in the Munich Olympics, and not only has he not just come out and said, yeah, I was, he's then lied about it, even though it's now in the public sphere. Can this man be prime minister? Is he fit to be prime minister? I don't think he is. Of course, that's for the voters to decide. To decide. But I think a lot more people would probably respect him a bit more if he'd just been honest about it, if he'd just owned up to it, rather than continue, as he has, to try to backtrack and to try to cover his tracks. Michael seems like a reasonable point, no? Uh, to be honest, I haven't compared precisely the two different press statements. I think the first one was saying that the reason Jeremy Corbyn was there was to commemorate the 45 people who were killed when the PLO was bombed. Um, and what's emerged now is that he was also at the reef ceremony where it was laid at this terrorist's grave. Um, I think the idea that you can look at that picture and it's patently obvious what grave he was at is ridiculous. I mean, I, I look at that grave, I don't know who he's commemorating at that point. Um, so I think the idea that you could... Uh, find out afterwards that it could emerge afterwards who you were commemorating at each different grave that you visited. Remember, this is the national cemetery of, of the Palestinians in exile. So this has everyone who's died who's Palestinian in Tunisia for the last 50-odd years. You know, he's not going to know the, the precise personal histories of everyone who is buried there. But, but I think Benedict's point is that, you know, if he wants to be the leader of this country, he should know. He should know who he's pose, which grave he's posing in front of with a wreath. Uh, so Jeremy Corbyn was a backbench MP. He was someone who was deeply involved in the Palestine liberation struggle, and he was there in solidarity there with go. that you movement. Say he's, but if he was deeply involved, then he should know whose grave it was, no? Uh, I mean, I think that's asking quite a lot of someone who is a backbench MP who is there in solidarity as part of a parliamentary delegation. I'm sure that now he's a leader of a political party and he's aiming to be Prime Minister. There will be plenty of people researching every specific place he ever stands. Uh, but. In those days, there wasn't. He was someone who uh, would turn up to many a demonstration because he believed that the people uh, he was there to support ha were subject to some kind of injustice. And that means sometimes he's going to have stood next to people with complicated pasts, sometimes people with horrific pasts. Okay. Uh, I think okay. we'll Back. look at his history and say that, on the whole, he has been someone who fights for just causes. Backbench okay. MP, member, la uh, leader of the opposition, man on the street, who on earth takes the time to go to an international event outside his own country and lay a wreath at somebody who he doesn't know who, he, who it is? Who on earth does that? Well, well, I've already explained the reason why he was there. So he was there because he was invited by the president of Tunisia to take part in a meeting which br was bringing together different factions in Palestine to try and make it more possible to come to uh, a peace agreement with Israel. Now, I agree, that's not a normal thing that British citizens do. That's actually why I have so much respect for Jeremy Corbyn and why I think his supporters 
and the general public see him as an unusual, uh, an unusual politician who stands up for what he believes in. He has a deep interest in all the liberation movements around the world in a way that not many politicians do, and I think we should celebrate that, not see that as a reason to have a cloud of suspicion over okay. his head. Guys, we're almost out of time. Brief thoughts before we end. Um, to you first, Benedict, what, what should happen next? Well, I don't think anything should happen next. I mean, from my perspective, politically, I think he should resign, but I thought he should have resigned a very long time ago. From his perspective, why should he resign? This isn't going to affect any of the people that are going to vote for him. They're still going to vote for him anyway. It's entirely up to him whether or not he decides to act on this. I don't think he will. OK, Michael? Uh, my advice to the Labour leadership and their press officers would be to stop taking this uh, in a sort of case-by-case -case basis. So there's going to be plenty awkward pictures that keep emerging over the next three years. I think what the Labour Party should start to do is say, we are proud of Jeremy Corbyn's history for standing up for the oppressed around the world. Uh, yes, that means he's sometimes been in complicated company. Uh, but on the whole, we know that this is someone who, unusually for a British politician, has spent his life okay. devoted to achieving international peace and justice. OK, good to talk to both of you. Thank you very much indeed for joining us on Sky News. Thank you. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, on that or indeed any of the stories that we're covering here on Sky News this afternoon, you can tweet me directly if you would like to, at Kay Burley. Now, around 20 white nationalists marched outside the White House last night, a year on from a deadly rally in Charlottesville in the US. Oh, yeah.